G'day guys, Buck up in North Queensland for another little short clip on my off-grid power system which is in the shed. As I said, my old mate Elvin hooked it up yesterday for me, absolutely fantastic. Just done another little experiment. Um, the whole system ran the air conditioner in the caravan, you've probably seen that clip by now, which is fantastic. So, people will be thinking, Buck, righto, during the night you're going to use this off-grid system to power your house during a cyclone outage, you know, a power outage after a cyclone or whatever. We might have power out for a couple of weeks, so we can keep the fridges and the lights and the fans running in the house. We know the system works, I run the 15 amp lead from here into the generator switch in the house and I can power the house and this shed, okay? Using my 840 amp hours of lead time lithium batteries which are hooked up in parallel under the bench here, just underneath here, okay? and using the iTech Well 3000 watt inverter to provide power to the house. So we know that works, I've tested that out. Not actually into the house, but I've run the air conditioner from it. People will go, why don't you just run your generator at night, Buck? Well, one, you have to get up every, I don't know how long the fuel tank, four to six hours and refuel it. Two, you piss the neighbors off running a generator at night. A lot of people you'll hear, brrr, the Jenny's going at night, you know, when you've got a power outage at night up here, everyone's running their generators to try and get the ceiling fans and that going because it is putrid up here in summer without aircon and fans. So I can run the house silently at night by using the inverter here. Run the batteries down overnight. I think I'm going to get a few days out of this, so I haven't actually tested it yet, but I think I'm going to, these batteries have got a lot of power in them guys to power that house that power that house only pulls i don't know between three and five hundred watts and i've got about eleven thousand watt hours here just in the batteries alone 840 amps in the old scale so you'll go righto buck what about the next day you still haven't got power you've been using the batteries the batteries are drained down overnight how are you going to get them back up the next day well one, if it's sunny, I can use solar, okay? I must admit, I'm not getting any amps coming out of that solar controller at the moment. I'm doing something wrong. I can put solar panels into this Anderson plug here. I've tested that and that works. And I know it's working because I've got the monitor up here which is hooked up to the shunt that tells me power going out, power coming in and all that type of stuff. So I've got the iTech World uh, shunt monitor there tells me exactly what I need to know. How much power is still in the batteries, all that, all the information that you need. It's not Bluetooth, guys, if you are wondering. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. It's not Bluetooth. It'd be nice if it was, but it's not. But I don't need it to be Bluetooth. I'll just come out and look at the, um, look at the monitor there. So, one way I can power the, get power back into the batteries the next day so I'm ready to go for the next night, so I can run the house silently the next night, is... I've got an angle generator under there, okay? A 2500 uh, angle generator. You've seen a million clips on that. So that provides me 240 volts, okay? Normally you've got 240 volts in your wall, haven't you? During a power outage, I'm not gonna have that. I'm gonna need a way, if I wanna run my AC charges to charge the batteries up, I need to be able to get 240 volts. I do that through the generator. So during the day when people aren't asleep, I can run the generator out here. It's nice and quiet anyway. Someone said, Buck, why don't you make a, a silent box up? You can put them in a box to muffle the noise. Yeah, that would be one thing. But I'd rather just have a good night's sleep and not have to worry about a generator running out outside, whether it's run out of fuel and all that type of stuff and how much noise it's making. I can do it silently now. So the next day I get out, I start the generator up. I am going to go to Bunnings or somewhere and buy a really good... Um, four-way power board guys with a circuit breaker in it that's I have got them but they're only little cheap ones I'm gonna get a proper one one of the orange ones with the circuit breaker in so I can plug in two AC charges and I'm gonna give you a demo in a minute on how that works I just ch checked it out and it works perfectly so Elvin when he hooked it up everyone we got the 40 amp AC DC not a bad band, that one, are they? AC, DC. So it takes it from AC, converts it to DC, and charges your battery. Speaking of AC, DC, everyone, 
I am going to go and watch that band on the 18th of December in Brisbane with the Gigi Gorilla and we're going to run a muck in town. If anyone wants a couple of spare tickets, they're about 300 bucks each, we've got a couple of spare tickets. So if you want to go out on the town with me and Gigi on the 18th of December and you want to cough up 330 bucks or something for an ACDC ticket, let me know. How did I get down that rabbit hole, everyone? Anyway, so at the moment my batteries are on 84%. I ran the uh, aircon in the caravan just to run the batteries down so I can test all this stuff out. So just pretend I've lost power, everyone. I've started the generator up and I run it into the, and I've got a four-way power board going, okay? So the first thing I can do is the one that's mounted on the wall here is the iTech World. 40 amp AC-DC charger, okay? So it runs on 240 volts. I need 240 volts for it to work. So, and that's where the generator comes in, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is just pretend I've started the generator up and I've got a four-way power board here because I've lost power. I'm gonna use the, the power in the shed. So I'm gonna plug this in, everyone. At the moment, my battery's on 84%, my batteries. Just pretend it's, I've got three batteries under there, lead-time batteries. They're hooked up in parallel, so just pretend it's one big big battery and it's 840 amps worth, okay? What's that, about 11,000 11, watt hours or something? I've got zero watts, zero amps going in. Nothing's happening at the moment. No, there's no power coming in. There's no power coming out. I'm not powering anything and I've got no power coming in. I'll pretend I'll get up in the morning I've used 16% of my batteries overnight to power the ceiling fans and the fridges and that in there. I want to top the batteries back up the next morning. Start the generator up. I plug in this AC charger into the power board, okay? The one that's mounted on the wall here, the iTech World one. Remember, 5% discount for everything at iTech World, guys. Mr. Buck 5. I'll keep reminding you. Now, I'm going to turn this on and then we'll see what happens. It's a 40 amp charger, okay? So one would hope I get close to 40 amps coming out of that, going into the battery to charge the batteries up. Turn him on. On come some lights. I've got it set to lithium profile because they're lithium. You, you set it to the profile that you want. It's set on LifePo4 lithium. Rightio. And my shunt monitor now is showing 505 watts going in. 38.1 amps, so not quite 40 amps, but 38 amps. This now is providing going into that battery. So 38 amps of power. You're probably thinking, Buck, what if these 840 amps are really low? 38 amps an hour, yet that's gonna have to be on for a long time to charge the batteries up. Well, as we know, lithium can take a lot of, a lot of charge going back into the batteries, guys. So what I've got, is lead time provided me this one here guys this is the 40 amp hour it's the same thing as the iTech world one lead time so leadtime.com remember eight percent discount at, at lead time guys on all their lithium batteries and their 20 and 40 amp battery chargers these battery chargers are bloody brilliant to use they already come Anderson plugged up and all that type of stuff. So on one end, I've got a 240 volt plug. So what I would do, have the generator going, I'd have a four way power board or whatever, and I'd plug this into there. So I'm gonna plug that into the power board, pretending I'm using my generator okay. This is the good thing about lead time, guys. They know how us Aussies rock and roll down here. Look at that. It already comes Anderson plugged up. That's one thing I like about it. Same as iTech World, they know we use Anderson plugs. Now you're thinking, where's that gonna go, Buck? How do you plug, where's that plug into? Well, Elvin, and I didn't think of doing this, Elvin said, why don't we run an Anderson plug off the bus bars here, so it could be an input and an output. So if I want, I can run a fridge via an Anderson plug. It's uh, Christmas time, I can plug a camping fridge in here to this Anderson plug, and I can, power a uh, camping fridge or whatever off the battery. So it's an input and an output. It's fused on the positive wire here. It's got a 50 amp MIDI fuse and the negative into the negative bus bar, the positive into the positive bus bar. The bus bars are connected to the batteries via a 
big cable to the negative and positive. So the buzz bars pretend that they're like the terminals on your battery guy, so I don't have to worry about hooking things up to the battery terminals. So here I go here, I'm gonna turn this on. So 37 points, say 38 amps going in out of the iTech World 1, which I've mounted on the wall. This one I'm not gonna mount on the wall, guys, because I like to have one that I can take with me when I, if I go on a long trip or whatever. So I've got a green light flashing there, which means nothing will happen with this until I plug it in. So I'm gonna plug this Anderson plug into the Anderson plug, which is mounted here, which is an input and an output, 50 amp, okay, all MIDI fused up. I'm gonna plug this in. Already Anderson plugged up by Lee Time, guys. How good's that? I've got a red light at the moment, red solid light. We'll give it a little bit. It started up, the little fan starts up. And that battery charger, 40 amp battery charger, is now putting power into the batteries as well. So I've got 38 amps going in out of this uh, iTech World 1 and 77.9, 1,045 watts going in at the moment using AC power, AC to DC, okay? So these battery chargers need 240 volts. I get that from the generator. Just remember it's the next day, I've got no power, that's where my generator comes in. I've got two 40 amp battery chargers putting power in now. 77.7, so I've got just under 80 amps. They're 40 amps each, so there you go. I've got just under 80 amps going into the batteries at the moment. So as you can see now, that's doubled my capacity. If I just run 40 amps, put another one on, my second 40 amp, because lithium batteries can accept so much charge, guys, compared to an AGM or whatever. So I've got almost 80 amps going in using my generator and a power board. So that's probably the main way I will charge the batteries up the next day. And before, before nightfall, I'll make sure that everything's up to 100% and I'm ready to go for the next night. So how good is that? My only other thing now is I'm, I can't, I've got the solar panels hooked into the thing. I've done something, something's going on up here. I've got to work that out. That'll be in a different clip, my solar. But at, what I hope to do is up to nearly 80 amps through these two via AC and then I can also pump solar power in as well and give it even more so I can be pumping solar in at the same time that's my goal I've just got a I'm doing something wrong with this bloody uh, solar charger here and um, I might have to ring Elvin up and bloody ask him a few questions but this clips all about charging my home off-grid system up using AC there you go 40 amp iTech world charger the 40 amp Lee time charger that's already Anderson plugged up. You don't have to get cables and everything made up, guys. They come with everything that you need. Just make sure they're on lithium profile because we're charging lithium batteries. They do the rest. They do the rest. So, there you go, I'm up to 85% now. So the percentage on the batteries has gone up just while I've been talking to you. Anyway, I'll grab the, uh, I'll just give you a closer look with the camera. We'll come back and wind up, eh? But, that's put my mind at ease now, knowing I can get nearly 80 amps of power back into these batteries using my generator the next day. You beauty. And there's the iTech World one, everyone. I've mounted that on the, on the backboard. I've just got plugged into there. Just pretend that's the generator, okay? I'm just running off 240 in the house at the moment. I'm just trying things out. So I've got 38 amps or so going in from that one. And then my lead time 40 amp charger. Okay, I've got him, that'll be plugged into a power board powered by the generator and it goes in via Anderson plug to my Anderson plug here, my input output Anderson plug which is basically just mounted there, I plug the Anderson in there, 50 amp MIDI and this Anderson plug is connected to the bus bars, positive, negative, so I could do a double adapter one here guys and run a fridge at the same time if I want to do a 12 volt fridge, but there you go. So that's how I power and get 80 amps of power into my batteries, into my lead time batteries. Two 40 amp chargers. One from iTech World, one from lead time guys. So you know I'm not telling porky pies. 
I've got 718 amps left in the battery. It's 85%, and I've got about an hour and a half left to charge it up at this rate. In an hour and a half, I'll, my batteries will be at 100%. I've got 77.1 amps going in, which is 1,033 watts. Batteries are at 13.3 volts, which is where you want them, okay? Probably end up at 13.4 once they're fully charged. So there you go everyone, I'm going to leave these on now, I'm actually going to, or will I? No, I'm not. I'm going to keep it at 85% because I want to work on this solar controller now. I've got to get, get the solar controller working so I can put my solar panels out and also get some solar power going in. The more power you've got going in, the better. Especially when you've got um, blackouts. But, hey listen, during days where I've got no, no sunshine or can't use solar, it's not going to be a big deal. I just get the generator out, make sure I've got couple of Jerry's a ULP there. Fire the generator up into a power board, which I'm going to buy a good quality one from Bunnings with the circuit breaker in there, and run both my AC charges off the generator, knowing I can get 80 amps in there. Wow. That's, that's put my mind at ease now. This thing is starting to all come together, guys. It's going to work exactly how I hoped it would. You bloody beauty. Anyway, hope you got something out of this, guys. If you've got a question, put it down there. Remember my discount codes. I'm going to keep banging on about them. 8% with lead time, 5% with iTech World. Uh, iTech World's got a lot of different gear to what lead time's just your lithium batteries and your chargers, guys. iTech World's got your inverters, your solar controllers, everything you need for your caravan. Two great companies that have really looked after me, and I, I really appreciate it. And the least I can do is, is give them a plug. And you guys get something out of it too. You get an 8% or a 5% discount every time you buy something from one of their stores. Absolutely fantastic. Take care, look after each other. We'll catch you again soon. The next one is going to be doing some experimenting with the solar side of things. I haven't got that up and running yet. I've got something going on there. I'll sort it out. And the next clip will be on how I can pump as much solar as possible into these batteries in time of a blackout. See you later.